Hello, comrades, it's the Finnish Bolshevik. Recently, there has been a wave of strikes and worker struggles in Finland. On 11th of November, the Finnish postal services went on strike. The strike began because of an attempt to severely cut the workers' wages. Now, it is worth pointing out that the postal services are of course owned by the state, and Finland currently has a quote-unquote social democratic government, which calls itself left-wing and pretends to be on the side of the workers. The pay cuts were planned together by the leaders of the postal services and state politicians. The supposedly leftist social democrats in the government were pushing these wage cuts. If the right-wing parties implement wage cuts, the workers would naturally vote for the social democrats instead. But if the social democrats themselves are the ones implementing wage cuts, just like the right-wing parties do, then what are the workers supposed to do? They become confused, apathetic, surrender to the mercy of the capitalist corporations. In a situation like this, as communists, it is our job to point out that the social democrats are not real leftists. They are frauds. They are mere servants of the capitalists. When push comes to shove, the social democrats never side with the workers. Never. They never side with the workers when the going gets hard. Now, the social democrats in the government were cutting workers' wages. So the workers go on strike to defend themselves, to defend their rights against these wage cuts. And the strikers received absolutely no help from the social democrats in the government whatsoever. Despite all their rhetoric about being pro-worker, they don't help the workers when the workers go on strike. The social democrats have shown themselves to be frauds once again, and all honest class-conscious workers must instead side with communists. Communists some independent progressives, trade unions, and the workers themselves were the only ones supporting the strike. The Social Democrats obviously didn't support the strikes, they were the ones behind the wage cuts. After the strike had lasted for two weeks, on 25th of November, it expanded to include various other workers related to the postal services, who belonged to the Post and Logistics Union. The amount of workers on strike thus reached over 10,000. The Service Workers Union, Finnish Seafarers Union, Finnish Aviation Union, Finnish Food Workers Union, and Finnish Electrical Workers Union all joined in the struggle by striking in solidarity or boycotting the postal services. They wouldn't deliver or handle packages for the postal services, the electrical workers wouldn't repair electrical issues for the postal services, etc. The Transport Workers Union and the Trade Union for the Public Welfare Sectors also announced short strikes and other actions in solidarity. The Postal Service Workers announced that they would strike at least until Christmas unless their demands were met. Further strikes in solidarity by other unions were promised for December. The Industrial Workers Union is currently in the middle of its own struggle against the government's and the capitalists' attempts to increase working hours without increasing pay. So, the industrial union voiced its solidarity for the strikers as well, and announced that it would go on strike in select workplaces and companies starting December 9th. The strike ended on 27th of November with a defensive victory by the workers. The Post and Logistics Union said in their announcement, quote, PAU, Post and Logistics Union, prevented the employer's attempts to significantly lower wages and implement worse labor contract terms. The attempt to switch certain workers to worse labor terms was prevented, unquote. It was completely outrageous to try to cut the wages of the postal workers because they are already poorly paid, and the work they perform is not only physically demanding, but also a completely necessary service. They are already understaffed and underpaid as a result of previous austerity policies, cuts and layoffs by the government. And now the government wants to punish them further by cutting their wages. The government and the capitalists clearly thought that the workers were completely crushed and completely apathetic if they would allow this to happen. But they were wrong. The workers finally had enough 
and rose up to fight for their rights. This demonstrates that there is a limit to how much the workers will actually tolerate. So this time, the workers actually were able to successfully defend themselves and prevent the wage cuts from happening. As a further result, the minister responsible for state-owned companies was forced to step down. The Social Democrats now pretend that they had nothing to do with this entire farce and instead put all the blame on the state ownership minister, who was just forced to step down. The right-wing parties in the opposition to the Social Democrats now opportunistically use this to bolster their own support. But we should remember how catastrophic the policies of the previous government, of the right-wing National Coalition, the Center Party, and the Nationalist Finns Party were. The previous government was a government of the three most right-wing parties. Their policies included privatizing healthcare, increasing unpaid work hours for basically everybody, because they literally implemented laws which said that everybody has to perform a certain amount of extra hours without extra pay, and massive layoffs in state-owned workplaces, including the postal services, etc. So the right-wing parties in the opposition right now, they can't really say, oh look, the social democrats are so terrible and we're so much better, because they're no better at all. The parties in the parliament are basically all the same. The only solution for thinking, honest, and class-conscious working people is to side with the communists. Now, what can we learn about this strike? We can clearly see, once again, the treacherousness of the social democrats and the reformists. Further, we can see that the workers will defend their interests when pushed far enough. The workers will not tolerate endless layoffs, endless wage cuts, etc. It finally reached a tipping point where the workers said that they've had enough. Now that said, the strike was merely a defensive action. The strike succeeded in defending the workers this time, but the capitalists will simply restart their attack again at a later time. Just because the strikers won this time, doesn't mean that they have really won for good. We shouldn't just be completely satisfied with this result, because it's only a matter of time when the capitalists will once again try to impose wage cuts. We need to not only prevent wage cuts, but we need to actually work towards improving the conditions of the workers. What should we do? What is our task right now? Our task should be to use situations like these strikes, which I think are becoming a more frequent phenomenon, because European capitalism has basically reached a point where they have to impose austerity, they have to impose cuts and privatizations in order to keep capitalism viable. They're kind of forced to attempt to make conditions worse for workers. So I think intensifying class struggle is to be expected. So our task should be to use these situations to increase the level of class consciousness. Currently, the workers are class conscious enough to at least defend their own interests against the capitalists. At least when it comes to something as egregious as significantly making the working conditions or the terms worse. We had a pretty big political strike in early 2018 because the government was so severely punishing unemployed people. And there have been some um, strikes in different industries because the capitalists have just tried to impose such terrible terms to the workers. But at least when it comes to the postal services, like this has just been a long process. They already fired so many people, they cut so much funding to the postal services, and now this, this was finally too much. So the workers are at least conscious enough that they realize, okay, now the capitalists are clearly screwing us over. They don't have to support any particular party, they don't have to understand anything about politics, but they do understand wages are being severely cut right now. Join together in solidarity and try to prevent that. So the workers are conscious enough to defend their own interests, at least purely economic interests, but not yet class conscious enough to fully split with the social democrats and the reformists. And we have to use situations like this strike to tell the workers that capitalism tries to screw them over. Now, if in your own work environment, 
it's not possible to talk to people openly about communism, which is, you know, it's understandable. So instead, you should just talk about communism when you are in political demonstrations, talk about communism to your friends, talk about communism to people who seem to be interested in politics or interested in the, the topic. But when you're at work with just co-workers who you don't really know that well, or who might not be very political, you should probably instead just talk to them about how the corporations are terrible, how the free market system always just screws people over, how the corporations and the politicians cut your wages, privatize services and all that, how the corrupt social democrat and other capitalist politicians in the government are all really in cahoots with the corporations and with the bankers and the millionaires, and you should definitely tell your co-workers how important it is to belong to trade unions. The unions, they provide uh, various different kinds of um, useful benefits to their members, besides um, just the fact that the union can like collectively strike and all that. When the corporations and the politicians and the capitalists, when they try to cut your wages, what are you gonna do if you don't belong to a union? What are you gonna do? Join a union, so if the capitalists try to screw you over, you have the whole union to back you up, to go on strike and to prevent the wage cuts. Imagine if the postal workers didn't belong to a union, their wages would have been cut. It was only because they had a union that they prevented the wage cuts. So if you have co-workers who don't belong to unions, tell them, yeah, you should probably belong to a union. We have to demonstrate to the workers that their interests are the polar opposite of the capitalist interests. And in situations like this, it's fairly easy to do because you see the capitalists are trying to cut the workers' wages, so there's a very clear opposition in terms of interests. Workers want higher wages, capitalists want lower wages. We have to demonstrate to the workers that they have to break with the social democrats and with the reformists. And the workers have to stop supporting these bourgeois parties, these capitalist parties, because it's those parties in the parliament and in the government who are imposing these wage cuts and the austerity and the privatizations and all that. Last time, it was the right-wing parties doing it. Now it's the social democrats doing it. They're all the same. The only ones who are different are the communists. We also have to demonstrate to the workers that they have to oppose reformists and social democrats in the trade unions. Because the trade unions have social democrat and reformist leaders who try to hinder the trade unions in their work. The social democrats in the trade unions try to prevent the trade unions from helping the workers. The workers would be striking and defending themselves and fighting for their rights a lot more if the social democrats weren't in the unions trying to prevent that. So we have to increase the influence of actual leftists in these unions so that they can more effectively fight for the workers. Strikes and protests like this are an excellent opportunity for us to push people further to the left and to radicalize them, as well as recruit those who are already more sympathetic to our ideas. This was a purely economic strike. The one in 2018 uh, was a political strike, but this also had a big political element because it had to do with the state-owned company. So, on the one hand, it allows us to show how the capitalists clearly are not on the same side as the workers, but it also allows us to make a more systemic critique where we can say that the government politicians are also in cahoots with the capitalists. It's not just the capitalists and the corporations, it's also the politicians. It's literally the whole system, the whole capitalist system. And it is important for communists to belong to trade unions and be as active in them as possible. First of all, they are a more favorable place for us communists to spread our views. You know, the people in the trade unions, they're already uh, more interested in activism, more interested in politics, more class conscious. They're a more receptive audience. And especially if, uh, let's say that you are a communist, you belong to a trade union, if you're active in your union branch, you can get put in a responsible position. That way you can demonstrate that you actually want to fight for people's rights. You can show your competence. You can get people to, you know, trust you and respect you, side with you. 
and provide an actual example of hey look there's this communist guy who is in our union and he is really doing good work lastly unions they are the place where the organized working class is so that's one of the ways that communists and communist parties can gain and maintain solid ties with the working class and it's literally this simple as a communist you just belong to a union and you try to get into a responsible position in the union or if you can't get in a responsible position you at least participate and are active in the union that is how communists form ties with the working class all right now it's a couple days later and there has been an interesting update to the situation an interesting new development it turns out that the prime minister has been forced to resign over this strike to be honest nobody really saw this coming because the prime minister hasn't been in power for very long at all and now all of a sudden he's forced to resign it seems that what happened was that the government wants to impose these wage cuts so the workers strike the workers win the strike the state ownership minister is forced to resign and the social democrats try to be like Oh, it wasn't us, it was just this one minister responsible for state-owned companies. So the state ownership minister was supposed to take all the blame for the social democrats. At the same time, the more right-wing parties in the opposition, so the neoliberals and the nationalists, they were basically preparing for impeachment against the government. It was probably not gonna work, but they were really gonna try to hit the social democrats with this. And of course, the workers and the people are obviously unhappy with the social democrats as a result of all this. So there really was kind of momentum against the Sock Dems. And then the center party, who was the main partner of the social democrats, the center party stabs the social democrats in the back and basically attacks the social democrats and says that they don't want to work with the social democrat prime minister anymore. So now the prime minister no longer has the confidence of the majority of the government. So he's out. He's resigning. Now, could they have tried to fight this? Could they have tried to save the prime minister? They could have tried, but I think that could have led to the impeachment of the government. So I think they're just going to accept this. It seems the government is probably going to stay intact. The center party and the Sock Dems are still gonna work together, probably. They're just gonna get a different prime minister. So, all of this is just like weird scheming and power struggles between various capitalist factions in the government. And people are asking, well, why? Why would they do this? Like, it makes sense for the right-wing opposition to attack the government because they just, you know, try to bolster their own popularity. But why would the center party stab the Sock Dems in the back? Well, it seems to me, based on some information that came out from like internal center party discussions, it seems that they think that the Sock Dem prime minister didn't hit the workers hard enough and they probably think that because the Sock Dem prime minister was too much of a softy that that allowed the workers to win the strike. That's how it seems to me. They blame the fact that the workers won the strike on the Social Democrat Prime Minister. They're thinking, if we had a stronger, more hardline and more right-wing Prime Minister, then the workers would never have been allowed to win. So they want an even more anti-worker Prime Minister, I guess. That's my interpretation of the situation. It's kind of speculative, but the objective facts of the situation are that there's just like weird scheming and internal power struggles between the various capitalist factions as a result of the whole strike situation and the workers winning it. It wasn't the workers strike itself that forced the prime minister to resign, although they kind of forced the minister responsible for state-owned companies to resign, but as a result of the strike, the capitalists just kind of went into this backstabbing and infighting. Thanks a lot for watching, I will see you guys next time. Please remember to like and subscribe, and also to turn on the notifications.
All my social media is linked in the description, as well as links to my Patreon and my Discord server.